become real. And the more real it becomes, the more desperate they want it. Capitalism has finest. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. But if I have to look at a hundred deals a day, I choose one. Now, first lesson in business, don't get emotional about stock, clouds of judgment. It's all about bucks, kid. Money never sleeps, pal. Just made 800,000 in Hong Kong gold. Hang on, baby Jesus, this is gonna get bumpy. Good evening, Stock Traders, and welcome to Stock Traders Talk Radio, here on a beautiful Tuesday night, February 21st, 2012. I am your host, STT. Joining me on tonight's program, I have QT Cal. Hey there, Mike. How are you? I am fantastic. How about yourself? Uh, Doing just great. Thanks for asking. That's good to hear. Also joining me on the program tonight is Siv Fakia. Hello, STT. How's it going? I am good. How about yourself? Doing good. That's good to hear, sir. Also joining me on the program tonight is Mr. Cop. Hey, Mike. How you doing? I'm good, sir. How about yourself? Oh, great. Doing really good. That's good to hear, sir. Also on the program with me tonight is Hoss. Hey, Mike. What's going on, gang? Not much, sir. How about hey. yourself over there? Hey. Uh, I'm doing all right. We were just talking about how we weren't getting any snow up in the Midwest uh, this winter season, and we just got a couple inches last night. And just plug it down for a giant flex. It's pretty cool. Nice. So I might have some outdoor hockey yet. I, I, will tell you, I, I will tell you this much. Since you left my beautiful state of Florida, yeah. the temperature has risen back up into the 70s and 80s every single day. I've been to Florida three times. That's happened every single time. Every time I head down there, it gets cloudy and rainy. I head back, perfect sun, and they always tell me about it after I'm gone. Yeah, so please so. don't come back anytime soon. Thank Fine. You. I'll head out to Cali. There you go. <laughs> Bring the cold over there. All right. Nice. Okay, now, tonight, we have done it again. We have yet another exclusive CEO interview lined up. Doing tonight's interview is Mr. Cop. Mr. Cop, take it away, sir. Thanks, Mike. We're here with Mr. John Folger, the CEO and president of American Community Development Group, Inc., stock ticker ACYD. Mr. Folger has 35 to 40 years Diverse history and background in many industries, ranging from credit card processing, franchising, public company acquisitions, and divestors, among others. In this interview, I'd like to cover the purpose of the company, the market niche it serves, the demand for services, and the timing of the new corporate initiatives plan. Welcome to Stock Traders Talk Radio, Mr. Bolger. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on the call with you. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to getting a chance to share my story with my shareholders and the rest of your audience. I, I bet they're uh, they're waiting patiently to listen to a lot of good things. How about if we start off with uh, with what your company does? Well, actually, the the business plan is actually quite simple. It's the execution that's uh, that's more complicated. Basically, what we do is we acquire real estate. We either lease it or we buy it. Uh, the basic premise for us is that this is the best time to be buying almost any kind of real estate, whether it's residential or commercial. So we have investors that help us acquire real estate on preferential terms. A lot of times we're buying it for anywhere from 30 to 40 cents on the dollar. Uh, as most of your audience knows, um, you know, uh, REOs, real estate owned by banks, uh, you can buy very inexpensively. So we're looking for more and more of that. Now, the unique feature to our business plan is that not only do we buy these properties or lease these properties, but what we do is, is we occupy the properties with clients of nonprofits. And the reason why that's important is that down here in our market, which is the Tampa Bay area, you can, you can lease a property, a three-bedroom house, to a family for typically about $900 to $1,000 a month. What we do is, is we turn these properties into transitional housing, 
uh, and we work with nonprofits and we share the revenue with the nonprofit. But in fact, we can then house up to five people in the same property. And each one of those uh, individuals, each one of those clients, uh, pays about $500 a month. So instead of generating $1,000 a month in, in gross revenue, we have a $2,500 a month gross revenue. Now, obviously, we don't get to keep all of that, uh, but we get, we get the nice opportunity of acquiring assets in real estate, and we also get good cash flow, and we get to do good for a lot of people because we invest uh, also in the efforts uh, and the support for nonprofits. So it's it's a it's a very it's a it's a it's a profitable business and it's also a great feel good business for us. Absolutely. The, in basic detail, describe what your background experience is and a brief history of the company. Well, my background is as you said in the introduction. I mean, I'm uh, I've been in business now for 35 or 40 years. Uh, I started my first company when I was 21, and it was a uh, uh, an industrial housekeeping uh, clean. Uh, we, we did a lot of cleanup after uh, after smoke damage and fires and things like that. And I started that with a with a partner, uh, and we grew it to a point where I sold it out to a, a very large operation and multi million dollar operation in Philadelphia. So so I, my first experience was as an entrepreneur very early. Uh, I then worked in uh, in corporate America for a few years, and I, and I had also worked in corporate America while I was going to college because I worked full time and went to school full time. But I always had been interested in owning my own business, uh, and I've enjoyed starting them, and I've enjoyed buying them, I've enjoyed selling them. So as you said, I mean, you know, some of my some of my uh, experiences in credit card processing. I've also been involved in in wholesale shopping clubs. Uh, I've also uh, owned a, uh, uh, a contracting company. My wife uh, was a partner with me in a contracting company, and we did a lot of renovations. She built about a dozen new houses. Um, and we also uh, we were partners on a 30-acre uh, 30, 30 horse farm up in, uh, up in Fairfield County, Connecticut. So my background is very diverse. Uh, I also have experience in the public markets before. Uh, some, of your, uh, some of your readers may, or listeners may remember uh, the dot com bubble. Uh, we were part of that, and uh, and unfortunately, we we were also on, on the downside of it because we had we had a situation where uh, our funding wasn't uh, wasn't completed. Uh, so we were one of the companies that did not make it through the uh, the dot com heyday. But you know there there were lots of those. So as I said, I have a very diverse experience, and I've always enjoyed building companies, and I've enjoyed working with partners, investors, and putting together management teams, and so on. Now, do you find that diversification to be a huge asset to you with, with when it comes to American? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, if, if I had a very narrow experience, uh, it would be quite different. Uh, one of the things that we do is we do some uh, business consulting for other nonprofits. Uh, and quite frankly, there are lots of people who have a very good idea of a, of a mission. Uh, they want to help a, a certain type of population, but they may not know how to structure businesses properly. I mean, and we've had some difficulties, you know, getting this one up off the ground as well, uh, because starting any business is tricky. You know, the fact of the matter is the more experience you have, the better prepared you are uh, to face some of the challenges that you're going to that you're going to have to handle. And so so we feel sorry for some of these people and try to help some other organizations where they may not have uh, the breadth of experience that I and some of the rest of my team have. So, you know, that's other, you know in addition to helping the clients in our houses, uh, this also gives us an opportunity to provide some assistance uh, and some some good uh, some good counsel to other people that that can use some help. So yes, it's very rewarding. Sure, sure. Now, what is the makeup of your board of directors or your team? And I'm sure you have a marketing team as well. And you know, what's the reasoning behind those teams? Well, right now we're we're still we're still in launch stage. You know, this is we're coming out of the uh, out of the gate right now. We've been working on this for about three years. Uh, the last 18 months has been the start of the implementation stage. So we have an advisory board, uh, and we have about four members, five members of that. Uh, and quite frankly, that's going to be changing now, but I haven't released the names uh, that were going to be changed. Uh, so th that'll be part of the, the next rounds of press releases. But we have four people on our advisory board. We have a two-member board of directors, our chief financial officer, who's very talented, David Gray and myself. Uh, we also have a, a management team. Uh, that we're affecting right now because, as you pointed out, we have operations responsibility and we also have, uh, have you know, ongoing management responsibility. So there are going to be a lot more announcements about that because we have essentially we, – we've actually broadened the management team and our advisory board substantially. So there's a lot more for me to talk about, but, uh, but unfortunately, since it hasn't been publicly announced yet, I really can't do it. You know, the fact of the matter is we have 
uh, a lot of very interesting news that we're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be sharing with our with our shareholders. Uh, so there's a lot going on right now, and, and why I'm doing this call is is you know essentially to prepare uh, people for the fact that we are now going through our our, our our almost our relaunch period. So this is a very exciting time for us. Now tell us about your strategic direction or your business objectives. Well, we've been very fortunate. You know, we've been uh, we we had a what we think was a fairly unique business proposition, uh, and that is trying that is mainly uh, using the existing using a publicly traded company as a means by which we could raise either equity or debt capital, and use those funds to acquire assets for the benefit of the clients of nonprofits. And we don't know anyone else that's really doing that. Uh, and the fact of the matter is we also have a, have a very strong interest in acquiring businesses because each one of these clients or, or, or a large portion of them uh, you know, requires some kind of outside work. I mean, we have a lot of them that are uh, that are paid by government vouchers, vouchers or some or maybe SSI or some other grant money that uh, to which they may be entitled. But there are a lot of them that, that don't want to sit around. They, they really need to work. So we have this captive workforce. Uh, and we think it's in our best interest to acquire some businesses that will employ these people. And that's also that also could be another uh, form of um, of revenue for us, because there's there are certain grants and you know, there's job training grant money and other uh, and other monies available. You know, as, as you're training people uh, who are either in drug and alcohol rehab or might be dual diagnosed, or they may be veterans, or they may be ex-offenders, and we're essentially taking those people and making them productive members of society again. That's a that's a very very intriguing concept. Where did that come from? Where did that originate from? Well, I have to admit that I was shown the basic concept by somebody else, um, and it was primarily with ex offenders, uh, and I had no idea how large uh, that population was. You know, in, uh, and I think most people don't realize that in the United States there are about 2.3 million people that are in prison right now. We have the highest prison population of any country in the world. Um, and I think I heard a statistic the other day that that one out of 100 adults is in prison. Uh, I mean, Ch- China doesn't have as many people in prison as we do. So, so we're really leading the pack in that regard. You know, what, whatever your political leanings, you know, it, it, we are we are incorpor- incarcerating an awful lot of people. Uh, and here in Florida, where I'm located, down in Tampa Bay, uh, I think there are uh, 67 prisons. Uh, and the fact of the matter is that the uh, that the Department of Corrections and all of its attendant you know costs and fees is the second largest industry behind tourism. Most people don't realize that. And when you, and when you hear all these stories about you know the privatization of prisons and and you know some of the other things that are you know, the, the changing of of the events um, and and the structure of of this particular um, corrections market, uh, it's only going to get worse. There are lots of uh, lots of states. Florida is one of them. California is another. Where they're being forced to release uh, people that are that are in prison because they just don't have the room for them anymore, you know. And, and unfortunately, we have we live in a society where uh, it's very easy to, to pose a you know a law and order perspective and say anybody who violates the law should go to jail for a long time. But the fact of the matter is, it costs a lot of money to do that. Uh, and it's our view that there are better ways to handle uh, offenders, especially young ones or you know people people who can go into you know a, a kind of a rehab situation. That's always, that's almost always a lot more successful than incarceration. The problem with incarceration is you're taking somebody who is, um, who's young and impressionable, and you're surrounding him with, uh, with experienced criminals. So all you're doing is teaching them to be a, a better criminal. Uh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the long term. Sure, sure. Now, when you're talking about the the significance of the market to a certain degree, and 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 clearly you tapped on a little bit of the uh, the targeted audience when. Can we dive down in that a little bit more? I mean, I'm, I'm really fascinated by the fact that you can house and the the, the route you're taking with uh, buying businesses to employ, uh, uh, the, you know, the people. I mean, can you kind of go into that just a little bit more? Because, I mean, I've never heard of anybody ever doing that before. Well, the interesting thing about it is, you know, there are lots of businesses that require basic labor. I mean, you know, people who are ex-offenders or who are in drug and alcohol rehab, I mean, generally they have some kind of a, of a background. They may be white collar, they may be blue collar, uh, but you know these people are carpenters, they're you know, plumbers, they're tradespeople, they're electricians. Uh, you know, they're they're really a cross section of everybody. So you know, for us to be able to to uh, to acquire or develop, you know, for example, a landscaping company or a painting contracting company 
or a cleaning company, uh, you know, any of those other kinds of things that, that acquire, uh, you know, large amounts of labor is absolutely perfect for us. And it's also perfect for them because it gives them a, a, an opportunity to earn a living, uh, rebuild their self-esteem, esteem, uh, and, and, and it gives us a chance to, to help train them and get them ready to, to repopulate society and come back as, as, a, as a real qualified member of society. So the buy-in is because it's a win-win situation for everybody. Oh, exactly. It, it has to be. Otherwise, it doesn't work. I mean, I, I have heard you know plenty of horror stories of, of people uh, that have been abused by uh, by other organizations uh, where they've actually you know put them in day labor and and have you know just absconded with all of their money. Um, I mean, the, the problem is you know this business like any other. Uh, can attract people who really don't know what they're doing or aren't effective at what they're doing. And we've made our own series of mistakes, you know, and, and the fact of the matter is this is an industry that you have to learn because it has its own certain idiosyncrasies, and we're, we're learning those. Now, regarding your business plan, uh, you, you kind of touched on this earlier. I mean, but what phase would, would describe to the audience as a snapshot of your current operations? I mean, it sounds like you're going off in a couple splinters there with the business side. But what, what, what would well, you call we're, the phase? We're actually we're at the uh, the baby launch stage now. We, we've we've come out of the gate uh, about a year ago, uh, and we started off very small. We acquired an interest in an existing um, uh, drug and alcohol rehab uh, transitional housing operation. Uh, we made some mistakes with that. We fixed those. We've we've we've, we've now modified uh, the operating plans of the company. We've changed our staff. Uh, we essentially in November what happened was we decided that we were going to go through a complete reorganization. Uh, and we're going through that, and it's almost finished. The fact of the matter is that the month of February and March is the transition period for us uh, because we have a, a significant number of new investors coming on board. We have new relationships coming on board. We have different uh, joint venture partners. We have uh, acquisitions that are lining up. So we're at this stage now where we're, we're just uh, uh, producing our, our first real rollout in Tampa Bay and we've already received inquiries from other markets, such as uh, such as Dallas and Los Angeles, uh, with other groups that want to partner with us. You know, we also uh, have been in communication with a group up in Detroit uh, that has about uh, 100 different properties. Actually, probably more than that. Uh, they do um, uh, they do larger properties. They do uh, apartment buildings and condominium pr- uh, uh, projects and so on. Um, so, so we're developing and expanding our, na- our nationwide relationships. Uh, because you know, because I think we, we you're right. I think we hit on something that's kind of a niche that nobody else is really going after, and it's and it's the the combination of things that we're using uh, that really works to benefit these clients, and it also it also works to benefit the investors. Now, now that you're venturing in the next stage of your business plan, what do your expectations say in the short term? Well, at this particular point, you know, and, and right now we're going through this this complete reorganization because. We have had to, to uh, we, we've had to train. Uh, I'm sorry, we had to change our, our website uh, to a, a more powerful host because we're getting a lot more traffic. Uh, the website is being um, repropagated now, so and that's going to take another day or two. There are a lot more changes to the website. We are expanding uh, our social media outreach like crazy. So the fact of the matter is, there's, there's a whole host of things that are being done right now in anticipation of a lot more press releases and growth. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've just added uh, a, uh, a vice president of, of uh, investor relations and marketing um, because that, that's now a key role for us. We have to do a much better job in communicating to our shareholders. So that's one of the reasons why the website is being developed, uh, the fact that we're being redeveloped and redeployed and expanded, because we need to create a better database of our, of our shareholders and our, you know, inquiries, you know, the, the people who want to know more about us. Uh, we haven't been a, we haven't done a perfect job as, uh, in, in that regard, uh, and the social media is just taken off like crazy. You know, we now have people that are implementing a, a social media marketing campaign. So, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, and other and other uh, marketing areas. We're, we're developing our own YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be putting up our own blogs. So, you know, th- there's a lot more uh, that's going to be put together now, uh, particularly now that David Atkinson has taken over the role as the uh, VP of marketing. Uh, and investor relations. Now we're fortunate to have him because he's got a wealth of knowledge in those areas. Uh, he's worked for a, a $900 million company. He's worked in stock exchange environments in New York as well as Toronto, and he's also established and developed communication programs with shareholders and boards of directors. So this is right up his alley. 
you know, his integrated experience in, in traditional market goes back over 10 years. So, so we're, we're very fortunate to have him. Yeah, it sounds like a very good match. Now, do you have any strategic alliances or partners? And if so, could you elaborate on the topic, specifically focusing on, you know, what they bring to your company and how it benefits each of you? Well, we're working on those now. I mean, I, I have been an active participant in a group called PERC, uh, Pinellas Ex-Offender Reentry Coalition, uh, and I've, and I've been, been involved in their meetings now for you know, probably a, you know, more than a year. Uh, and, and there are probably a dozen uh, different groups that meet once a month. Uh, we, share, uh, you know, we share ideas. We share uh, problems. We share solutions. And there are organizations within that group and other groups uh, that we do have um, – uh, you know, cross marketing agreements. We have uh, we have uh, uh, cooperation agreements, uh, and in some cases, we're going to be uh, uh, announcing joint venture agreements and joint marketing agreements. But I haven't I haven't uh, announced those yet. So that's again that's part of why uh, David has come on board, and that's part that's part of why we're we're you know, getting ready for you know updated website and other communications because we have a lot more news to share with our clients and with and with our uh, with our shareholders. Now, beyond the service itself, what are the longer-term goals, say, you know, one year or five years from now of, of your company, and how, how are you planning to get there from here? I mean, specifically, commenting on, the you know, the catalyst and milestone events you anticipate, say, in the next year. Well, actually, one of the things that's become apparent to us is, we, you know, w- once we solidify the model, like I said, we're, we, you know, we, we had to back up and, and reorganize some of it, uh, but now we, well, now we think we understand where, you know, where all of the, uh, the weaknesses are. Uh, and we're now we're working on an acquisition now that you know there'll be there'll be more news announced on that very shortly, and and what we're seeing is is that acquisitions where we can pick up you know a bulk quantity let's say of five million dollars worth of uh, uh, worth of uh, properties, should, you know such as this acquisition, I mean it's it's seventy properties in in one transaction, uh, and in addition to that you know we pick up cash flow we also pick up the uh, the talent of the uh, of the management team uh, of that entity. So there are several other entities that we're org- that we're working with. Um, we have another group in Tampa uh, that is uh, that has a, a series of mobile home parks that we're discussing. We have another group in Tampa that uh, represents um, a, a, a couple of huge conglomerate uh, uh, enterprises um, that is uh, that is discussing with us, you know, the possibility of, of investment. Uh, they're they're interested in, in putting up uh, you know, a couple million dollars. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, you know, we, we have this private placement memorandum that uh, that we're just starting to circulate, uh, and we're we're thinking about raising it from two million to five million because the fact of the matter is, we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of positive feedback because we now have enough experience to show how the model works. Now, from a let's go from to a potential investor for shareholder perspective. I mean, what's your current share structure? Uh, current share structure is uh, we're authorized 115 million shares. Uh, in the float rate, I'm sorry, it should be outstanding is 79 million 261, and the float is very small. It's 27 million 643,165 shares. That's current as of February 2nd. That was the last time I inquired. So that, now, that's all the, brand, uh, new, brand new information and very current. That's, uh, I'm sure many will like that. They, who is your transfer agent, and are they open for investors to inquire about the share structure of your company? They certainly are, and they have been authorized to do that. Uh, and in fact, you know, we, we've had shareholders uh, that may have commented that uh, that we're one of the few companies that invites our shareholders to call. Um, and they're actually a terrific group. It's uh, Clear Trust LLC. Uh, they're in Lutz, Florida, L-U-T-Z. Uh, and I'll give you their phone number. It's area code 813-235-4490. And they can either ask for Kyla or they can ask for Matt, or they can ask for Kara. Any any one of those people would be happy to help them. Uh, they really are terrific, and they have a website. It's www.cleartrustonline.com. They're wonderful people. They're very professional. Uh, they take good care of us. They take care of our shareholders. Um, they solve problems for us. They're just absolutely terrific. I can't speak too highly of them. Yep. That's that's awesome. Now, what what are your potential or your actual revenue streams that you have in place? Well, right now we're our monthly revenues are running just under about fifteen thousand. Uh, they should be about twenty five thousand. We expect that to to change in the next couple of months. Uh, with these new acquisitions that we're lining up, uh, th- that revenue will probably double. 
uh, and then every time we make an make an acquisition of you know depending on the numbers of properties, it will keep it will continue to double. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you know, now I just want to point out that that's the top line revenue. Uh, that's not our net. So the fact of the matter is, like I said with that example, uh, with a three bedroom house where we generate twenty five hundred dollars per month. You know, obviously we have mortgages to pay, and we have leases to pay, we have utilities to pay, uh, and we have uh, disbursements to the nonprofit. Uh, but we, but we still wind up, uh, you know, we still wind up making a fairly good profit profit at this. And what we've done is now we we, we now have in our new business plan, uh, we've shown the consolidation with a couple of the new acquisitions that we're looking at, uh, and also the addition of some businesses that we're negotiating. Uh, so the fact is our, our long our long term. Um, Six month and, and, and six month through five year prospects are looking fairly terrific. I mean, we, we have done a lot to redesign the business plan. And a matter of fact, we, we, I don't know whether we'll put the business plan up on the website. We may, uh, but if anybody wants uh, wants to know anything more about that, they can email me directly. Uh, my email is J F O L G E R stands for John Folger at a c d g i n c dot com. Now, what does the balance sheet look like? Balance sheet is is low because right now, I mean, we, we haven't really pulled the trigger on many acquisitions. As I said, we're just coming out of the gate now. The properties that we've started this on uh, have all been leased. Uh, we're negotiating with this acquisition where, where there are properties. Uh, this this first acquisition is about $5 million worth of value and about five hundred, maybe four to $500,000 worth of equity, uh, but it's got cash flow. So we're going to use that as the uh, as the launching point for the next round of continued acquisitions, and then I have I have a couple of other <clears throat> excuse me a couple of other merger and acquisition candidates that we're going to be talking about very shortly because I have a lot more news that I have to get out. Now earlier you mentioned that you're working on a website or you have a website. We have a website. It's AmericanCommunityDevelopmentGroup.com. So the website is up, but like I said, it's just recently been migrated, um, and we're waiting for that propagation to take place. Uh, the website just came up uh, the other day, uh, and the propagation generally takes a day or two, uh, and then we have a lot more upgrades that we're going to be doing to the website. So people who click on the website will see that there will be a lot of changes to it, uh, and there's also uh, room for uh, either a current investor, current shareholder, or someone who's just interested in learning more about us uh, they can click on several of the links and they can uh, they can enter their their information and we can certainly supply them with anything that they need. Now, will will this be the best resource for potential investors to learn more about the company? Uh, yes, I mean we, we we'll make sure. I mean, there's a lot of information on the website right now, uh, and as I said, there's going to be a lot more added to the website. Uh, we're going to be posting videos um, and also uh, you know we're working on a YouTube channel. So, so it will be the it'll be the basic um, uh, avenue by which most people can find out a lot about the company. Uh, we have websites that are also going to be launched because we're sponsoring a couple of nonprofits. Uh, so those those websites will come up and they'll be linked to AmericanCommunityDevelopmentGroup.com. Uh, so, so there's a lot more that's going to be available on the web over the next couple of weeks, and we're we're very excited about finally being able to tell the story. And we also we're, we're very interested in being as transparent as possible. Because uh, we, we're anxious to become a reporting company, we want to move up on the pink sheets. Uh, the fact of the matter is, that there's a lot more that we can do uh, as our stock gets some uh, some volume and, and some some price increase. And we're pleased that you know the stock increased almost 100% last week. Um, so I mean, if, if we can start, if we can get that kind of continued support, uh, life will get wonderful fairly quickly. And, and the fact of the matter is, since we only have a 27 million uh, share float, um, it, 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 it's it's easy to see that the, the, the stock price could improve. Now, what do you think makes ACYD a good investment for potential investors? I mean, more importantly, if you had a five-minute elevator speech that would represent the excitement of the future of your company, what would it be? Well, I think the, I think the basics are, you know, if you wanted to donate money, uh, you, you get a tax receipt, uh, and that's wonderful. You know, in fact, what we've done is we've taken, you know, the, the, the good works of a nonprofit and we've turned it into a for-profit that actually invests in the in the uh, in the welfare and the well-being and the future support of nonprofits. So essentially, we're we're, we're the advantage is we're killing two birds with one stone. Uh, an investor that makes an investment with us is getting an economic return either in debt or in ne- or in equity. Uh, plus, they get to feel good in fact that they they know that we're helping you know certain numbers of, of people of the disadvantaged populations all the time. 
as we grow the company and we invest in more and more businesses, obviously our cash flow is only going to will only increase. So the fact of the matter is, you know, we are very we're we're a unique and viable uh, social entrepreneurial model, uh, which is relatively new. I mean, we you know we're, these kinds of social entrepreneurial businesses have been around for a while, but we're one of the few that are do, that are doing this particular kind of combination. So it's well rewarding for an investor, both from a financial standpoint and also from a uh, uh, from a social responsibility standpoint. Now we've covered a lot of information. Is there is there anything that you'd like to address that I didn't cover? Um, no, I think I think we've got pretty much everything covered. I mean, there, you know, you've given me a, a real good opportunity to answer a lot of the questions that we talked about. Um, the fact, you know. It, 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 it's it's very interesting that that I've had a chance to talk about you know the details of this business. Uh, it's a it's a great business for us. It's a great business for our shareholders. We have a whole lot more information that we need to get out, uh, and I'm looking forward to to distributing that information as often as possible. Mr. Folger, we would like to thank you for taking the time to speak to our audience, and also we would like to extend you an open invitation to join us on the radio show anytime in the future. Uh, thank you very much. I really I appreciate it, and I very much enjoyed the conversation. And thank you so much for you know for for asking me such pertinent questions. I really appreciate the fact that they were pointed and direct. All right, sir. Have a very good evening. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks all. All right, bye now. Bye bye. That was Mr. John Folger, the CEO and President of American Community Development Group Inc. Stock ticker ACYD. All right, guys. That's a lot of good stuff. Uh, yeah, I would Very definitely good. say so. I mean, the the con- you guys ever hear of that concept before? No, I, no. I was very intrigued when he first started off. Uh, you know, um, and the housing market right now to buy housing at, at the cost they're at now is just an incredible opportunity for them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. You know, one of the things that really interested me was the fact that he was talking about buying businesses so that he could put those who have been incarcerated back to work, which is a huge, uh, a huge part of this concept. Just from being in human resources management over the last 15 years, I know that many businesses have a specific hiring policy, and um, those things include maybe not hiring those who have a felony conviction on their record. So this is an avenue where I think that he could really – prosper in in regards to getting people back to work back into the community to um you know a successful future so that actually is a very intriguing thing oh yeah absolutely it's always nice to see these kinds of companies that you know sure they're trying to build their own business and you know put profits in their own pockets but at the same time they're helping the community in a bunch of different ways uh, that most other companies don't because they're just greedy (laughs) (laughs) that's that's about all that is that is is a different twist huh yeah yeah well hey if you can do both why not right yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely i mean the the biz and you know what was he saying was it like 30 cents 40 cents on the dollar Mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's that's pretty accurate for where i live i don't know where to get that with you guys yeah yeah, I mean, like he said, I mean, he's down in Tampa, and I guess uh, the gist I got was that's the, the area they're concentrating in. Um, and, you know, I'm about an hour away from Tampa, and uh, I know that area down there could definitely use the help. So, uh, you know, the prices down there are just rock bottom right now. So it's a good opportunity. Also, he said there's a lot in the pipeline, so investors should be excited about that. I mean, uh, he sounds like he has multiple PRs ready to go and will be processed as as he goes and, and moves along here. Um, I, I know he didn't say how many, but he definitely definitely sounds like there's a few in there at least, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, yeah. Be interesting to watch how watch how this one unfolds. Yeah, give it a month or so. We'll see what happens. Guys, got anything else to add? Anybody? No, sir. No? no? I think that's good. Is Siffy, is Siffy still with us? Siffy! No? Guess not. All right. We're going to take a small commercial break here, and we'll be back right after these words. 
And now, a quick word from ThePennyBin.com. What does one penny say to the other penny? Let's get together and make some sense. Are you tired of losing your hard-earned pennies? Be sure to visit ThePennyBin.com and download our iPhone app where delivery of our stock plays right into your iPhone instantly. The time to start making money is now. Please be advised that you may make huge sums of money and that the ThePennyBin.com will not be held liable. Stock Sumo, where we outweigh the competition, pushing and shoving our way to extreme profits in the penny stock arena. Go to StockSumo.com today to sign up for our free alerts via email or text message. StockSumo.com, where the games are groundbreaking. Don't just take our word for it. Find out firsthand by heading over to StockSumo.com, home of the real heavy hitters. as always. Very interesting stuff. Um, today, I think we could call it a Toppy Choppy Tuesday. We see that Dow briefly kissing that 13,000, guys, first time since May 2008. Um, we all know we didn't close above it and definitely didn't see that big mom and pop rushing in because uh, CNBC told them it was 13,000 and the train was leaving the station, but uh, I think he saw some profit taking. I mean, Greece finally came out, got their uh, second bailout to a tune of 172 billion U.S. money, um, or Euro money. I'm sorry. Uh, so, what, what are you going to do? They're trying to default that, you know, avert that default in March. So we're not going to hear the last of this. That's a guarantee. So, uh, guys, we didn't really have too much economic data today. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., you're going to have that housing market. And uh, that's definitely going to be moving the market. And I mean, you, you've been seeing when you look at the, I mean, all these economic data, they got charged to them too, guys. You can go to the NASDAQ. That's the site I like to look at. 
um, just NASDAQ.com, go to their uh, news and commentary section, go to the economic calendar. It breaks it down for you. You can click on it. It'll explain it to you what it is, what the consensus they're looking for, um, what the definition is. I mean, it really breaks it down, shows you the charts, shows you the data, and you can kind of put those all together, and, and then you can start thinking like how the big boys do, why Goldman Sachs and these guys are getting – giving higher GDP numbers and shooting higher on their estimates. And, you know, it all goes together. So tomorrow, guys, um, like I said, the the only thing that's really big tomorrow, I mean, at 7 a.m., you get your MBA purchase application, 745, the ICSC Goldman store sales, 855, you get your red book. So a lot of retailer stuff going on in the morning. And then, like I said, the, the market mover or the one that's going to, you know, shape the rest of the day is definitely going to be that 10 a.m. existing home sales. And like I said, if you go ahead and go to that NASDAQ.com, I'm sure there's other sites that have it, even all the brokers guys. But I just like this one because they actually give you the Econo Day charts. And you look at this, and you can see going all the way back to 09 has really been where we've been sliding. I mean, we were sliding before that, but this goes back to 08. And uh, you can just see that we've been on this downtrend. But when I look at the chart and you see there was definitely an uptick going all the way back to like around September um, of 2011 where you, you've been seeing it come up. So, And they're looking for $4.61 million prior. The consensus is going to be $4.69 million. So that consensus range is going to be 4.5 to 4.82. So when you look at those, you can almost already – Set yourself up for, you know, if it breaks below that consensus, that's bearish. If it breaks above it, that's bullish. I'm not saying that they don't always go with that, but when you're in a nice trend, that definitely helps the street go to work more to the upside or to start taking profits. And like I said, you can play that through, uh, you know, the Reese, the home builders, a lot of different ways to play that. So check that out. That's pretty much going to be what's happening there. Um, we've had a lot of earnings on Sunday night I was going to do a stock spotlight, but we ran out of time, and I know you can't go back rear view mirror here, but I'm going to anyways. We're going to do ticker symbol MUX. That used to be UXG, U.S. Gold Corp., which is now uh, McEwen Mining. I was going to do a little spotlight on that. We didn't get around to it, but guys, it rocked today. Get it on the radar. Do the due diligence. I love this stock. I am long this. There's my disclaimer. I got long again at five bucks. It cracked 550 today. It was up uh, 10 percent. A lot of money coming in. A lot of a lot of hype around that. I mean, it wasn't just the MUX. I mean, all the all the gold miners were doing good today. They um they definitely were kicking some butt. Same with silver. You saw all that. That all that all goes you know ties in with the whole grease thing. Uh, so that that was to be expected. That you know, gold, silver, the miners, they were all going to follow up on that. But as overall, the market, guys, I mean, you just got to keep sticking with what's working. And, I mean, today's kind of funny. Your best group was your firearms group. Go figure. Um, maybe people ain't so, you know, you had Ruger, Smith & Wesson. Um, those are pretty much the only two ones that are in that group. And uh, year to date, I mean, these things have been kicking butt. And these are stocks that we've talked about for a long time, especially Smith & Wesson, something I've really been into for uh, – going on almost four years now. I mean, we used to trade this thing when it was a lot cheaper than it is now. Uh, it's up 20% for the year. Ruger's up almost 31% for the year. So both of those have been having a uh, great year, to say the least, and they kept moving along day. And then you had your uh, silver miners kicking butt today, fracking. Now, fracking definitely jumps on my radar as being one of the best groups today because when you look at the groups overall year-to-date, guys, you know, and this is another thing you can find this on your platforms. Um, there's different websites where you can just look at, you know, all the different groups year to date. And when I look at year to date, uh, up top we've got, you know, obviously risk on. You got your social networking, your solar, digital media, Euro crisis bank stops, uh, shipping companies, home builders. So risk on, right? Now when you go to the other end of that. You got your electric generators. <laughs> Who the hell is the electric generators? I don't know, whatever that sector is. But number two, you've got fracking, guys. So, like I said, that, that raises questions with me ASAP. I know fracking's already been the dog of the year, and now they're at the top for the day. So, what's leading these? So, let's look at the members of this group. And 
uh, first thing I'm going to do with that is I want to see year to date who's kicking butt in this. And I can see that nobody's kicking butt. The only one that's even up for the year is ticker symbol FTK, okay? And that is Flowtech Industries. And uh, the chart doesn't look that great. I mean, if you would have bought it in October, hell yeah, that thing was a rocket. It went from uh, about 4 bucks to over 13 So, oh, well, missed that boat. But now they're trading at 11 bucks. So that was the best. Now, the worst is ticker symbol CRR. And uh, this is Carbo Ceramics. And these, are, these aren't cheap stocks. I mean, this is a $92 ticker. But the one that is really catching my eye of the group is ticker symbol H-E-K. And I'm not saying that this sector is uh, taking off or anything, but uh, it's, it's one to look at because it's been a dog. And the ticker symbol H-E-K, the first thing I look at this is it's got a great pattern set up. It looks like it's uh, – some people might call this a microphone. But uh, anyways, it's, it's been rising up, and it's broken through its 20-day moving average. I mean, all of these, I'd love to see a pullback before I got into. I'm just saying get it on the, get it on the radar. And the last one of this group – to look at guys would be uh I'm sorry, lost my page there of the tickers would be the uh R E S. All right. So check those out. You got C R R F T K H E K and R E S. And those are your fracking guys. And I know that we've talked about that on the radio before about the fracking and basically the the risks and the rewards and the pros and the cons of it. Maybe one day we'll talk about it some more, but um, that's pretty much what's going on there. And like I said, you, all of this is at your uh, fingertips and, you know, your worst groups today, airlines, obesity drugs, cancer treatment, consumer video chips, drug delivery. And, uh, but on the other side, you know, you always can count on your, your drugs and your therapeutics to be your biggest gains or your large or your biggest losers as always. So, your biggest gainers, and of course these ain't pennies, guys. It's a uh, you got Quartz, Quartzep Therapeutics, QRT, PWAV, PBH, CHG, MITL. All these things are cracking, uh, going to unbelievable new highs and uh, making a lot of people money. So just want to kind of throw those out there, and just something that I always look at is what groups are doing the best. And like I said, it's definitely been all risk on when you look at the, the, the groups that haven't been doing good, it almost makes you have to go out and buy those telecommunications. I mean, they're still negative for the year. I mean, right now you still got nine groups that are negative for the year, year to date and uh, telecom and treasury bond funds are among, among them. So when you see uh, at and and Verizon negative for the year, I, I want to buy that yield, guys. So I, I'm definitely looking at the dividends, 13000 Yeah, if we can get through this with some momentum. I love being long. I still think we go higher. But, hey, I would like a little bit of a discount. So that's pretty much what I got, guys. All right, Sifakia. Fracking. Fracking. Just thought I had to throw it in there because I remember Kopp was talking about it, and uh, I don't remember exactly what our conversation was, but that was something that caught my eye today, that the worst group was one of the best groups today. So just something to take note of. Maybe it's time to, you know, we saw it, all the losers of 2011 become the winners of 2012. Now, how long that will last and how much higher those losers go up, who knows. But um, just something to keep an eye on. Okay. Now, you'll keep us updated on your own little page on the website, correct? Yeah, I'm just waiting for you to get it finished. And whenever, right. whenever we finish it, it'll be done either tomorrow <laughs> or the next day. And you can follow Sifaki and all his fracking. Yes. Right there on his own web page. Don't forget to visit the new StockTradersTalk.com website. Looks kind of nice, if I must say so myself. It's a beaut. I like it. It's a beaut. I like it a lot. It's got shiny microphones. It's blue. It's got stuff and more stuff and pictures. and Oh, my God. Everything you need to see. It's got Cop's Corner. Cop, do you want to tell us a little about your corner on the website? Uh, basically, I'm doing a, a blog situation on uh, all kinds of different things. You know, stuff mainly stuff that I find over the years. Uh, and, you know, as far as tips and tricks and those type of things that will actually help traders and, you know, that that type of stuff. And it could be anything. It's, you know, some could be uh, – 
legality stuff. It could be uh, DPCC stuff. It could be trading styles. Uh, a lot, mainly tips and tricks and all that stuff. I've collected a ton of stuff over the years, so that's about essentially what that is. Okay, and so if you want to give us a little update on what your page will be once it's ready. Well, it's going to be charts, uh, uh, a lot of video. I'm going to do a lot of video charts. i got classes. i got different setups, um, strategies, things I'm looking at. It's going to just be a, pretty much – Everything that I'm doing during the trading day, just trying to put it on paper and letting people see what what I'm doing in a, in a nutshell. Nice. Very nice. Also, you can read the bios on every post of the radio show. That's on the front page right there. Um, and it should cover a lot. You can listen to the show right there. Uh, we have a little uh, display underneath the show if you want to get a little box with your iHub membership you can it's right there below the uh the radio show live show and uh that's about it for the website that i can think of off the top of my head should be very interactive all our shows are there in video and you can listen to them right there it's good stuff well guys it's been a long day i know i'm tired i want to wrap the show a little early tonight i hope nobody minds do you mind anybody yeah. mind? Not at all. Of okay. course not. We need your beauty sleep. <laughs> We're going to lose eight minutes of the show tonight. We hope you enjoyed tonight's interview. Join us tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio, and we are out. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio. All views and topics talked about on Stock Traders Talk Radio is solely for entertainment purposes. We are not professional financial advisors and always recommend you seek the advice of a professional financial advisor. Never invest in any stock featured on our show unless you can afford to lose your entire investment. The information contained on our show is based on sources which we believe to be reliable but is not guaranteed by us as being accurate and might not be a complete statement or summary of the available data. Stock Traders Talk Radio advises that the investments in companies profiled are commonly considered to be high risk and use of the information provided is at the investor's sole risk. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio.